It's Dave here from Amplify talking to Ernest in Nashville at the service station. Pretty cool service station. So, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you doing? No, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. All right, let's start. Let's start. Some of these are pretty straightforward questions because we've got a short period of time to try and get across to all your fans out here what's going on. Have you always right. wanted to be a musician? Definitely. As long as I can remember, I've been gravitating towards instruments and making songs up and trying to write them. Yeah, for sure. From from when you can remember, did, when did you get the songwriting bug? Like when did you when did you actually look at yourself and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm I'm a songwriter." Uh, I mean, I was like writing poetry that turned into songs probably in like fourth or fifth grade, but. I dropped out of my freshman year of college and decided to commit myself to trying to write songs. So when I signed my publishing deal in 2013, that's when I could technically say I'm a songwriter. A songwriter. That is my job. <laughs> and, and, and that's when, you know, so the adventure become, uh, obviously the adventure be, uh, uh, began before that, because obviously you've got to get to a place where someone's deciding to sign you up. So where did, the, right. where did the adventure start? Where did the performing adventure, you know, get out there and the bug and, the fans and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I always had a guitar with me at school and would play in the hallways, or I was always, you know, church camp talent shows. I was always playing a song I wrote. So uh, I was always, always performing or entertaining in, in some regards. Right. Um, actually, I grew, I grew up with Mitchell Tenpenny, and uh, I grew up with Mitchell Tenpenny, and we, we made a bunch of music together back in the day, all through middle school and high school. So we were always in the same circles rocking out. Fantastic. Wow, wow. How would you describe your sound? If someone came up and said, what, what, do, what do you do? And you say, I'm a musician. You, 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 how would you describe your sound to them? I'd say I sing I sing real country music and, and don't confuse country music with redneck because I'm not the most redneck one of my friends, but it's it's damn country music. Okay, okay. That's interesting. What's What's, what's the difference? Uh, I'm like, redneck would be more of like, I don't, I'm not a deer hunter. I don't have, I'm not just like slinging mud and singing yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. cooler, Yeti coolers. And like, I, if I ever have any of that in there, it's a homage to, I've definitely had plenty of nights sitting around on truck beds at bonfires, but like, I'm not, uh, dragging a plow i'm not gonna sing al dean songs it's just not my life me yeah, I'm, I'm more yeah. of a heartbreak drink about it fall in fall in love and fuck it up and write those stories perfect perfect what why do you think fans have resonated so well with you like you've had six is it right you've had six number one hits uh as a songwriter i've had eight yeah and then Ooh. uh i've just flower shops is like my big song as an artist um i think the fans have resonated with me like I was saying, I think it's just authentic, and I think authenticity resonates. No, I think so. I think it makes a difference. Uh, who, who, you know, throughout those uh, adventurous times, who were you looking at? Who, who, what, what artists were you sort of looking at to sort of say, you know, if I could not so much be them, but if I could, you know, that's that, that looks pretty cool. You know, they, they, yeah. They... Uh, John Mayer was one of the first yeah, ones for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, John Mayer was, then George Strait, yeah. um, Haggard, Jones, Cash. So all the uh, old, all the old man, school as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the Eagles, the, I love, my band, we, we feel like we're the modern day Eagles someday. We're, you know, just in there jamming out during sound check and stuff. It's like, yeah, oh, you guys yeah, got cool it. hair and. That's, yeah. a pretty, that's a pretty big statement, really, because, you know, all those dudes could play about a million instruments and they were all, you know, multi-talented and all that. Is, is that where yeah, you're... Yeah, I got, I got a badass... I got a badass band. They're all they're all good songwriters and multi-instrumentalists and they're good to sing with. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And you all get along. So maybe... maybe Are we looking at 30 years in the future, looking back, saying... Um, we all we all get along now because we haven't really called ourselves a band yet. So. Really? 
<laughs> no, no, I, I'm just kidding. If we were a band and there was all kinds of dynamic fight, then we'd probably end up like the Eagles and break up a million times. Well, probably. you still plus, you know, they were lucky. Linda, Linda Ronstadt sort of introduced them, so they they still had to have their luck as well. So, that true, was pretty cool. Your new album, Two Dozen Roses, uh, just been released. Dis can you give me a bit of a description about its origin and its evolution? Yeah, uh, it started, you know, during the original Flower Shops, the song, that era. I was just writing in this world, this jukebox world. And uh, we put out the first 11 songs, and I just kept writing uh, after we released Flower Shops, the album. And we looked up eight months later, and I had another handful of songs that I felt like was basically a part two to Flower Shops. So, um, so yeah, they lived in the same world. It's still like a sepia tone Honky tonk, dim lit neon bar, and this is the music that's playing in there. Wow, uh, that's cool. That's cool. What, what what would you call the signature tracks? Um, this fire, um, hill, and maybe heartache in my hundred proof. Okay, okay. And what about your favorite? What's your favorite? Can you say? Can you say what your favorite is, or what's your favorite yeah. to play live? I think this fire is my current favorite. Yeah. Why? Just feels good. Yeah. So when you get up there, you you know, it's easy to sort of just go bang and pour it out. Exactly. Yeah. It's easy to rock. Um, All that early success, because you've had a fair whack of success. And I don't know about early because you know you know when you when Bieber comes out and he's just a teenager or or you know uh, yeah you know some of these people that are seventeen and they're just on top of the world I don't know that you can call anything early these days but does does, right. it, does all that success for you you know you talk about authenticity you talk about the band and you talk about the connection it sounds to me like you you, you what sounds to me in this short period that you take it in your stride more than it sort of puts a pressure on you. Is that true, or do you think do you think that success sort of puts a pressure on you to sort of you know, especially in this social media world where we're checking numbers and we're checking results and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I, I don't feel pressure. I think it's any any bit of success along the way is just affirmation that we're not crazy and to keep grinding, keep grinding, and and uh, uh, you know, does Na where, where do you live? Do you live over there? Do you live in Nashville? Yeah, born and raised in Nashville. And does that help? I think so. Yeah, you're in the mix. You're here all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you're out here for CMC Rocks, uh, or you will be out here shortly for CMC Rocks, and to do some more shows with uh, Morgan Wallen, who's uh, featured on on that single. Uh, yeah. What are you looking forward to? Man, just getting there first of all and i hear the fans are amazing so yeah hearing hearing people on the other side of the world sing my songs is going to be pretty sick you see the kangaroos just jump down the middle of the uh the venue you don't no 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 that doesn't happen uh yeah, yeah, no. actually, yeah, <laughs> what sort of what sort of ideas the same way that we have ideas about nashville you know yeah what sort of ideas do you have about australia you haven't been here obviously yeah i, I haven't been uh I'm going in with a pretty open mind. I don't. I don't really hold any stereotypes to it. I'm just gonna go rock. I've. I got several friends from Australia here, and I love. I haven't met an Australian I didn't like. So I think we're gonna have yeah, a good no, time. It's a cool place, and the and the fans go up. We don't have obviously countries, you know, uh, uh, huge over there, and over here we're sort of still developing sort of thing. But uh, right. the fans, the fans, I think you'll enjoy the fans. What what can the fans expect? What can the fans expect from your show? If they were sitting back now and they're saying, "Why would I come to an earnest show?" What what would you tell them? You can get some good feeling country music. You're gonna be able to feel sad if you want to, feel happy. As long as the beer is cold and in your hand, then I got the music for you. Boom 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 boom. And Morgan is a collaborator. What's that been like? It's been great. He's one of my best friends in the world in real life. So. Uh, the the fact that we get to do music together is just icing on the cake. Was that before you started, or or uh, was that as a result of the music? You know, we've we've been friends since like 2015, and we met because of music at, at Big Loud 
before either of us really had anything going. He's cool too. He's very cool. You both. Yes, he so is. Let's let's just say that. Let's just say that. Okay, so CMC's right. later in the year. What else you got going? Uh, so have you got other stuff coming up? I'm I'm on tour with Morgan all year this year. So we're gonna go all over the place. Where where are you going? U.S. All over the country. We I think we got yeah. We start in Australia and then we come back. We go. We're going to Auckland and then we come to Australia and then we come back to uh, America and play for six seven months. Whoa. And you enjoy it. You obviously I love it. Listen, uh, I was going to ask this a bit later, but uh, you obviously you've got a a child, so I presume you're married. Yeah. Yep. I've been married for five five years. And and uh, and uh, that's happily married, even though you're touring around the country. Do you, does she go, or does what what happens with she that? Com she comes sometimes. Ryman will come out sometimes. Now that I have my own bus, it'll be easier uh, to accommodate travel like that. And it's an adventure. And when you're young, you know, when you're older, maybe the creeks bloody catch up with you. But when you're young, you know, you can get through that sort of stuff. Now they yeah. they tell me they tell me too. Just staying a bit personal for a second. They tell me that uh, you and the son have something uh, going on with Bluey. I love Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> love Bluey. It's, I was yeah, that's what I was saying. It's, it's always on in my house to the point my conscious is 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 Australian accent at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we used to do it thirty years ago. Uh, my kids are, are, are now thirty-ish. And uh, we did it with The Simpsons when The Simpsons first came out. And when they first came out, oh, yeah. I mean, it was a fair dink of novelty because, you know, they, they're strangling people and all this. And no one had ever seen anything like it. And we'd sit down there Saturday morning. They'd have these three or four hour sort of body one after the other sort of shows. And it's amazing yeah. how the real connection with your child because your child's sitting, yes. there, you're sitting there. It's like, you know, there's a reason for them to hang hang around together. So that's a yes. That's a, I think it's a pretty cool thing. So well done. I, it I, is. I think it's terrific. If you could put these one of those corny questions, if you could perform with any music artist alive or dead, who would you choose? George Jones. George Jones. And why? Man, I'd, I just want to hear him sing in person. If I got to sing with him, cool. But I, to stand on a stage with him doing what he does would be a dream. It would be. Maybe in heaven. It would. Well, well, you know, send back a tape, you know, if they let you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, hey, if I wind up in hell, maybe maybe Jones is singing karaoke in hell and I'll be down there fucking taking the mic from him. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Um, do you still have, uh, well, obviously you're just, you're just in comparison to me anyway, you, you, you're a youngster. What are your long-term aspirations? Music. Yeah, I, I think I'll always be writing songs. Uh, I want to get in on eventually on the publishing side and sign some artists later in life. But right now I'm in the thick of it and I'm just going. And you love it. I love what, it. What 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 advice? You know, it sounds like you had a, a, you know, just talking, it seems like it's pretty seamless. But I'm sure you had your own ups and downs and bloody challenges uh, in that period. Uh, everyone always looks at this, the number ones and all this sort of stuff and thinks that someone just lucked into something, but usually it's a lot of hard work, obviously. What advice would you give to somebody starting off, especially in this TikTok world? Because, you know, the last couple of yeah. years really mucked up music by virtue of the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, labels want people to take part in TikTok and TikTok's not exactly the music vehicle. No, I, I think... In short, horse blinders. Just keep your horse blinders on and and run like hell. And and if there's a hurdle, jump it. And if somebody said no, they didn't mean it. Just keep and, going. And that's and that to some degree never changes, no matter what era you're in. If you can, that's if, right. Yeah. If you can keep focused, you know, just keep and keep present because you know, right. um, being nice is uh, is uh, attractive. Yeah. What's the what's the best thing about performing to a live audience? And I suppose you've performed to plenty of them, and that that best thing may change over time. Yeah, hear, hearing people sing your songs back will never get old. That's the <laughs> best. Who is who is saying something about that? Um, 
Oh, okay. oh it was Dua Lipa. And she was saying that uh, she forgot the, she forgot the words to some song and her fans were singing them back. And she yes. was looking at them to try and see their mouths to try and find out what those words were so that That's she could, great. you know, generate the, 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 the thing. But that, that would be very, very cool, I could imagine. Definitely. And the career highlight. What, what's a career or a few career highlights so far? Debut with the Grand Ole Opry was great. Um, joining Morgan at Madison Square Garden to sing Flower Shops was awesome. Oh, my God. Um, that would have been huge. Having a, I just got my second triple play award, which is three number one songs in a twelve month period. Uh, those are those are rare, and I've landed on two of them in the last two years. So that's a highlight. <laughs> and and when you go in to pay at the service station, did they recognize you yet? I haven't I haven't gone inside yet. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Well, well, you know. The, you've got the baseball cap on, so that's a start anyway. I think the beard had, had given it away, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I can just go in looking like you're, Creed. <laughs> you're done. You'll probably get arrested by bloody uh, Homeland Security or something, right? Yeah, no shit. I probably shouldn't do that. Nah. All right. Just uh, we've got a couple of a couple of uh, um, you know dumb questions, I suppose. But people like the dumb questions sometimes. Just some quick answers, just to finish us off. Favorite album. All right. Ooh, Room for Squares, John Mayer. And that's all time or current? Uh, that's if I had to answer one, yeah, one album. But talk, we could spend, yeah. yeah, we we could talk for hours. <laughs> but and most most people say the same thing. They say, "Look, how can you? You know, you can't do that. I can't yeah. answer that." Favorite artist? Hmm. George Strait. There you go, and. You see, some of these people are huge, but they're not huge here in terms of, you know, but they're huge when you know music and you know America and all that sort of stuff. You just understand how, how huge they are. So I get that because my, my, my father was from Colorado. So Montrose in Colorado. Oh, yeah. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dual national. Favourite oh, cool. movie? Favourite movie, Pineapple Express. <laughs> Favorite. Oh, it's not exactly The Godfather, but you know, it's a, it's a it's a good movie. Favorite place to visit? It will be Australia, but before you it will you, be uh, Saint Saint Thomas, USVI. I love <laughs> I love the Caribbean. Aha! Uh -huh. Favorite venue to play? Well, I have Madison, I suppose. After what you said, yeah, I mean, that's what, maybe the Ryman. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. I think some of the some of the guys have told me at different stages and they've toured and you know done venues and uh, uh, arenas and stuff. But some of their favorite stuff was like, you know, 15, 20 people at some bar in America as you're driving through. And you know, it's just there must be you know, there's so much that goes on there that's that's uh feeling and conscious and connected that right. uh, we because we're sort of just cities around the coast predominantly we just don't have the same sort of uh, appreciation for because you right. know, there's so much going on over there in so many different places uh, i've lost i have lost Ernest. i suppose he had 20 minutes and that's all he had so that's the end of the interview boom boom thanks for thanks for listening